Hello, friends. Uh, hello and welcome back to our discussion on uh, heroin and opioid use. Uh, today we will be going over uh, the slot this slide here in your notes, uh, life of a heroin user. This kind of sums up when you take everything that we've talked about, what does the day to day like look uh, like of someone who is using heroin on a daily regular basis? Um, somebody who is in active addiction. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and uh, open up your packets so that you can take these notes, that would be great. So as you've seen through all the videos and things that we've shared of you, oftentimes people who are in addiction um, typically need to use at least three to four times inject uh, injections per day uh, needing to prevent that withdrawal. Again, um, at some point, it becomes not about getting high. It becomes about staying out of withdrawals and trying to prevent that feeling. Um, that is the thing that is more important for them. Um, because of this, this daily need to shoot up multiple times a day in order to function and stay functioning, this becomes an extremely expensive habit um, because of the cost of the drugs and the paraphernalia, the needles and other such items that are needed to go into this. So oftentimes uh, people are going to um, engage in other illegal activities as a way of expen uh, finding money to pay for their habit. So this could be stealing, this could be robbery, this could be prostitution. Um, there are lots of different ways. And some people, again, jump into actually selling drugs as a way of providing for their own habit. So because of the expensiveness of their habit, um, it pushes them into oftentimes other illegal activities. Um, there's going to be a constant risk of overdose due to a variable potency of different batches. Again, remember that this drug does not come to them from a pharmacy. There is nobody who is saying that what you are getting is pure, it is clean, and it is this strength. Um, you know, when I dish out ibuprofen or Tylenol to myself or my children, I know exactly how strong that medication is and how much I need to give um, or take myself in order to get the desired effect. Um, because you have no idea how potent the uh, drug that you are ingesting is, um, you don't know how much it's been cut, cut with non-heroin um, non materials, or you don't know what part of it is the fentanyl or other um, stronger potency types of heroin, um, you could get a hot batch and therefore overdose. Um, oftentimes people are also battling other health uh, problems that come along with uh, injection. Um, oftentimes heroin users are battling other health related um, illnesses and things like that. Um, oftentimes you will see people with skin infections, skin lesions, because um, as they begin to use the same veins over and over, obviously reusing dull or infected needles, um, they will get abscess, abscesses or, uh, on their veins. Their veins will also start to collapse and retreat into their body. So it becomes, as they become a user longer and longer, it becomes harder and harder for them to find what they call good veins. Again, they are, they are um, under um, higher risk of contracting a bloodborne infections, primarily HIV AIDS um, and or hepatitis C. And also it can mask early symptoms of other illnesses. So you could be sick, you could be um, struggling um, to uh, with a say pneumonia or other type of illness, um, and you would not know it because your body is going to be just so depleted from uh, this drug use habit. Um, some users will mature out. Some people will um, be able to get clean and, and age out 
of this, but oftentimes that is not the case. Um, it is very unlikely to find an old age heroin user, um, oftentimes because if they don't get clean, um, they will overdose and die. Okay, so to um, uh, help us understand what this might all look like put together, uh, we are going to investigate this uh, gentleman. He has allowed cameras to come along on his last day before entering rehab. We're going to see what that looks like, and then we are going to watch him as he does engage in that first day of rehab. And now, meet Jason Amaral. He is the face of the epidemic. He grew up in the Boston suburb of Arlington, Massachusetts, went to high school there, and then on to college, where he became an addict. He could be your child, or the kid next door. As the president said in his address on Saturday, 44% of Americans know someone who has been addicted to prescription painkillers. Well, tonight, Correspondent DeMarco Morgan and producer Jonathan Blakely begin a special series, In the Shadow of Death, Jason's Journey. Real quick. Is this good enough, dude? Your eyes open, you think about heroin. Nothing else, nothing else. And any addict that's watching this will like, will attest to that. And if you don't have money, you're thinking about how to get money to get heroin immediately. Jason Amaral's hunt for heroin began at 7.30 in the morning on a brisk day in downtown Boston. All right, I'll see you in like five minutes. He allowed our cameras to follow him as he tried to get money to get high. I have to get my money at Western Union, but you saved me a little. All right, I don't give a f I'll go with you to wherever, buddy. I don't get a Are you serious? Come on. I'm, oh, yeah, don't answer your phone, you f***ing dumb. From a parking garage, he called his Aunt Beth in Florida begging for cash. Can you send me $30? Believe me, like this is the last time I'm doing this to you. If I got, this doesn't work this time. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm serious. He hopped a train to meet a friend who gave him a few pills of Clonopin, an anti-anxiety medication known to addicts to take the edge off the urge. Right. I'm about to do all four of these right now. Yeah. And then, then shoot some heroin. He searched for a bathroom where he could crush and snort his pills. We're in such a high drug area, they don't let people use the public bathrooms. So, Jason went for the one building he knows is always open to the public. Excuse me? Where's the entrance to um, City Hall? Oh, right up there. Right up there. Right up there. Once inside City Hall... I hope they don't check my bag, dude. He headed for a basement bathroom and put the money his aunt sent by Western Union to use. That's Clonopin. Around noon, we met Jason on the street after he scored more drugs from friends. I just did some heroin and I was sick. You know, I just did a shot and I'm very, very high. Like, and I feel great and I'm gonna go do what I need to do to make money, you know what I mean? And uh, that's just how it is. But Jason's life wasn't always like this. He grew up in Needham, Massachusetts with his younger brother, Andrew, raised by a single mother who by all accounts gave her boys a happy childhood. But when Jason was only 11, his mom died of cancer. So the boys moved in with their father. In college, Jason started experimenting with a pricey pain pill, OxyContin, which soon led to heroin. And so began the life of an addict. The morning we met him, he was on multiple drugs. And like over the past three days, like what, what's in your system? Like what have you... What have I done? Yeah. Um, heroin, clonopin, Xanax, cocaine, crack, that's it. By that evening, we found Jason at a friend's house. The two had scored some heroin mixed with a powerful drug, fentanyl. That's your shot right now, point one. They prepared it while the friend's three-year-old child watched TV in the next room. Remember, that next morning, Jason's supposed to show up at a rehab center. His phone rang, and it was his younger brother, Andrew. Oh, my brother, my brother. Andrew is also an addict who called to tell his big brother he was dropping out of a detox clinic. I'm going to rehab tomorrow, and I'm going to stay. Sorry, dude. But as he begged his brother to get help, he couldn't help himself. When he hung up the phone, Jason was overcome with emotion. But not for long.
I'm just tie you off like that. Stop it, red light, and stop, but red means go and shoot heroin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Over the next couple hours, we watched as he nodded in and out. Shot up again. Snorted more pills. And saved some heroin for later. By then, his best friend, Mike Duggan, arrived. What's up? Ready to do this? Mike is a recovering addict who's been clean seven years and was taking Jason to rehab the next morning. It's life and death. Like, you will die if you don't get it this time. You know what I mean? Like, it's just really what it comes down to. The next morning, Jason, who has overdosed eight times and lived to tell about it, began the next chapter of his life. Good morning, Jason. How are you? We're so glad you're here. Now, Jason walked through those doors with at least five drugs in his system. And tomorrow, we'll show you Jason's first a tough week in detox, his struggle to survive, and Scott, the moment he's brought to tears after learning some bad news about his brother Andrew, who again is also a heroin addict. DeMarco Morgan, thank you very much. Now, as we watched this together, uh, hopefully you saw many of those uh, things from the last page of notes. Uh, you saw that drug seeking behavior going on all day long. You looked at him uh, finding and reaching out to people constantly trying to find money. Uh, you saw that there being a risk of overdose use because of the use of um, because of the use of uh, uh, heroin with fentanyl um and obviously you know he is looking for an alternative way out all right so now we're going to look at what happens during this first day of rehab for this individual we're turning now to an epidemic that is taking three lives in this country every hour the abuse of opioids including prescription painkillers and heroin Jason Amaral could have been a dead man. The boy next door from a Boston suburb got hooked in college. He's now 30. And we're telling his story because we want you to know there is both hope and help for addiction. Last night, we followed Amaral as he shot heroin for what he hoped would be the last time. As we left him, he was entering rehab. Correspondent DeMarco Morgan and producer Jonathan Blakely continue our series in the shadow of death, Jason's journey. 24 hours into rehab, we found an emotional Jason Amaral fighting through the first critical hours of detox. He'd just learned his younger brother Andrew, who was also an addict, was back on the street because he could not find an open bed for treatment. He's running around Boston and high again, so... You know what I mean? I don't know. Can you like stop the camera for a second? It had already been a rough first day for Jason. He walked into recovery after a drug binge. All right, I'll see you there in like five minutes. He allowed our cameras to follow him the day before as he roamed to the streets of Boston in search of drug money and heroin. Oh yeah, don't answer your phone, you f***ing dumb. That morning, he crushed and snorted pills from a toilet seat in City Hall. He met friends to shoot up in the middle of the day. I just did some heroin and I was sick. And I just did a shot and I'm very, very hot. And then, that night, we watched him inject more heroin laced with a powerful drug, fentanyl. Not once, but twice. We're being so popular, we usually do either way. Before his best friend, Mike Duggan, arrived. What's up? Ready to do this? Mike is a recovering addict who's been clean seven years and came to take Jason to rehab. It's life and death. Like, you will die if you don't get it this time. You know what I mean? Like, it's just really what it comes down to. Mike traveled by plane with Jason from Boston to South Jersey to make sure Jason made it to Recovery Centers of America in time. Good morning, Jason. How are you? We're so glad you're here. So me and Jason ran together. Uh, you know, we, we got involved with a lot of this stuff together, um, you know, and uh, fortunately, you know, I was I was able to find it a lot sooner because um, I've been terrified for him, you know, for years. Jason. Hi, Jason. Welcome. What I'm going to do is I'm going to 
what brought you into you. treatment? I, I honestly don't know how to live a normal life sober. I don't like. I don't know how to deal with life. <laughs> Notice how Jason was visibly uncomfortable as he's forced to give up the pills he had in his bag. We're passionate about recovery. We believe yeah. in what we do. Yeah. And we know that people get well. And you can get well. And yeah, we, can, no. we can help you get there. You've taken everything from me. In one of his first therapy sessions, Jason was given a bat and told to confront his addiction. It's not going to ever, ever put me in an ambulance again. I'm never going to overdose. My brother won't overdose. He's going to survive. He's going to get it this time. His kid, my godson, will never see us high again, ever again. He won't take anything from me or my family again. All right, now I'm like so wet. And it was that day's small victory. Yeah, I feel better. I took a lot of anger out on it. I mean, I never did that before. You had the synthetic high you're getting from heroin. We want to replace that with a natural high, the yeah. endorphin kick. Okay. <clears throat> to get his mind and body off drugs, Jason is encouraged to do exercise and yoga. Good. All right, rest. There's going to have to be a bigger part of me that wants to stay clean than a bigger part of me that wants to get high. Because there's always going to be a part of me that wants to get high, always. For the rest of my life, and I know that. Like she said, it's a disease. Like, I'm going to want to get high for the rest of my life. Are you afraid of dying? I'm afraid of getting high and dying is what it is, you know what I mean, right now. I don't want to die using drugs. Like, I don't want my legacy to be this kid overdosed, you know? We weren't allowed to record Jason's medication process, but he was slowly weaned off heroin with opiate replacement drugs over the first seven days. And Scott, you've heard Jason talk about his family. In our next report, you're going to meet the people who love him most, his family, and who have been affected by his drug use. That includes his brother, who is also addicted to heroin. Great public service reporting. DeMarco Morgan, thank you very much with producer Jonathan Blakely. There is more on Jason's journey and information about how to get help fighting addiction. Help is possible, and you can find it at cbsnews.com slash heroin epidemic. Returning. All right, and I wanted to start with that second uh, piece there because that is the next uh, lecture that we will go over when I... Uh, meet with you again on Thursday, uh, which is going to be looking at that uh, pharmacotherapies for opioids and people who use uh, opioids to get off of addictive opioids. And so we're going to talk more about that on Thursday. Hopefully this has been um, enlightening uh, to you and uh, make sure that you go in and check out our film for today, Chasing Heroin, uh, an arrest leading to an inner, inner intervention, and then also look at our article, When Harm Reduction Harms Heroin Addicts. Thank you very much and have a nice day.